Hey guys, Miss Yeager here. I just made a little review for y'all so you know exactly what's on your quiz tomorrow. <clears throat> um, so it's a review of graphing quadratics that we did last week. Um, our new stuff, average rate of change, and then converting standard to vertex and vertex to standard. So <clears throat> the first thing you have to remember is your axis of symmetry. So there's two ways to find that. And you can either use x equals negative b over 2a, and that's when it's in standard form. So that's when it looks bx plus c. That's when it looks like this. That's when it's in standard form. Okay, and we did that last week. <clears throat> if it is in intercept form, you do this. So that's intercept. Form. That's when it looks like it's factored. So it'll be like uh, a x minus p x minus q. That's when it looks like that, and you'll use this one. Okay, so you have, don't forget to put your axis of symmetry. So like on our first example, I just give you the graph, and there's no axis of symmetry, but y'all need to know that your axis of symmetry goes where? It goes right through the vertex. So this right here is your vertex, right? It's your, this, in this case, it's the lowest point of the graph. It's the valley, and it's going to go straight through at negative 1. So that is x equals negative 1. And my vertex, if we just look at this point right here, <clears throat> the vertex is actually at negative 1, comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've already found my vertex is negative one, comma eight. Nope, negative eight. Negative eight. I went down. Okay. My axis of symmetry we already found. We said it went straight through the vertex, and it has to be x equals negative one. You have to have that x equals with it. If you don't have the x equals, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, remember your range is bottom to top. <clears throat> or I think if you're in Ms. McGaw's um, first, I think it was first period, y'all like to do the bottoms up like we did last time. <clears throat> so my range goes from bottom to top. So my bottom of my graph is right here. It is my vertex. And so if it's bottom to top, your range always uses your y values. Okay, so another thing to remember, it's your y values, okay? That's for the range. So my range, the bottom of my graph is a negative 8, because remember, I counted down to negative 8 before. So it's negative 8, and it's actually on my graph, so it gets a bracket. Then, as I go up, it goes up forever. So that's infinity. <laughs> So it's like my floor is at negative 8, and then I have no ceiling. That's how I like to remember it. It's going up forever. Okay, your end behavior literally just looks like your, look at, looks at your ends. So even if I didn't have this, even if I just had a sketch, let's say I just gave you a sketch, and I was like, okay, what's that end behavior? <clears throat> all you do is look at the ends. So all I'm doing is looking here and looking here. So both those ends, are they going up or down? They're both going up. Okay, so since they're both going up, they're going to infinity. So it matches. If they're both going down, so let's just say it looked like this, then your end behavior would be as x approaches infinity, y approaches, x approaches, negative infinity, y approaches. Okay, so if this was your fill in the blank, it doesn't matter which way x is approaching, if it's to the right or if it's to the left, because both sides are both going down. So then both of them would be negative infinity. Okay. Last but not least, you have your interval of increase and decrease. Okay, so let me change colors for this. Let's do pink and green. So your graph for all of our um, quadratics, all of our parabolas, which are the U-shapes, will have one 
um, interval of increase and one interval of decrease. So it splits. So half of it, and then you stop at the vertex, and then you have the other half of it. <clears throat> okay, it's just left side, right side. <clears throat> So on, let's say left side, and then we have the right side of the graph. So we're, it's always going to be split into two. Okay, one of the sides will be increasing and one of the sides will be decreasing. So on this left side, as I start on the left, if I was a person, or if I was on a roller coaster, so I'm a little person. Okay, I can only walk to the right. Okay, when I'm walking on any graph, I can only walk to the right. So if I was walking to the right, I'd be going like this. I'd be going which way, uphill or downhill? Downhill. <clears throat> so this left side is the decrease. Okay, so I'm gonna put a big decrease, which means I get to my vertex, and now I'm walking again, so I get all the way down to the bottom. And now I'm gonna start walking again. Remember, I can only walk to the right, so if I walk to the right, I'd be walking up. Okay, this would be going uphill. <clears throat> this would be a struggle. So this side is increased. Okay, and how you're doing it, since the vertex is what's splitting it, okay, the vertex is splitting it, and then this thing right here, I don't remember what it's called, Axis of symmetry. Okay, the axis of symmetry is splitting it. Well, what's the axis of symmetry labeled? It's labeled x equals negative 1. <clears throat> so let's go back to my blue color, green. So the I just started on the left side, so it's decreasing. So it's starting on the left side. Remember, your left side is considered negative infinity. Okay, so it's going interval of decrease, so it's the bottom one. Is going from the left side, which is negative infinity, all the way to this axis of symmetry, which is negative one. Parenthesis. Okay, then we have our increase. So my increase starts here at my vertex, starts here at my axis of symmetry, so it starts at negative one, and goes all the way on the right side. That's what I labeled it. And the right side is positive infinity. So it goes to infinity. So I hope that helped if you were confused last week when we did this. Um, the last, well not last thing, but the next thing is, let's scoot this down, is your average rate of change. Okay, so that's your slope. So here's your formula for average rate of change. And then <clears throat> it says, I'm just going to read the example. Find the average rate of change for this function over the interval of this. Okay, so this means I'm looking between x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. Okay, this could also be written, just so you know, as x negative 3, negative 2. Okay, it could look like this too. It could also look how it has in the brackets. <clears throat> okay, and it could also look like I just wrote x equals negative 3, x equals negative 2. Okay, you can see it any of these three ways. You have to know that they all mean the same thing. Okay, when you're doing average rate of change, you're always given the x values okay you're always only given the x's okay so you're going to be given the x's you got to figure out what the y's are okay so you're always given the x values so if i know my x's i know my y's Sorry, y'all. It's hard to do this when you have so much stuff on, on your table. Okay, so I am let's scoot this 
them. I need to use a sticky note because I look too big. So I have to use my x. So I'm going to say x equals negative 3. Okay, and I'm going to plug it into this formula. So that's 2 times negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 minus 6. Okay, you can use your calculator if you would like. But this is 2 times 9 minus 12 minus 6. Uh, 2 times minus 18 minus 12 and 6 is 18. Oh, that's nice. So this ends up being 0. Okay, so my first point, I have x equals negative 3, and my y is going to be 0. So this is negative 3, 0. <clears throat> oh, you can't see that. Negative 3, 0. Okay, so that's the first point. Your second point, you're doing the same thing, but now I'm plugging negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is what I'm plugging in. So 2 times negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 6. 2 times 4, negative 8, negative 6. Uh, 8 minus 8 minus 6, those cancel, negative 6. <clears throat> okay, so your next point is negative 2, negative 6. If you don't trust yourself doing this math by hand, please use your calculator. And when you use your calculator, you have to make sure you put parentheses everywhere. Okay, so my two points I'm using are negative 3, 0, and negative 2, negative 6. Okay, so that's going to help me when I do my average rate of change. So my average rate of change says, average rate of change, says y2, so this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. Your first point gets the 1, your second point gets the 2s. Okay, so y2 minus y1. y2 is negative 6 minus y1 is 0 all over uh, x2. 2 is negative 2 minus a negative 3. Okay, two negatives make a positive. So this is actually negative 6 minus 0. So this is actually negative 6 over a negative 2 plus a 3, which would give me a negative 6 over a 1. So negative 6 is my average rate of change. Okay. Finally, we have converting if I can get it into the frame. This is not working. Okay. So finally we have converting. So when you're doing converting you need to find your ABCs, you need to use the vertex, and then you need to put into the formula. Okay, so change this into vertex form. So A equals B equals C equals A is 2, B is 4, negative 6. <clears throat> I need to find my vertex because it's called vertex form. So my vertex for standard form is X equals negative B over 2A. So X is going to equal negative 4 over 2 times 2, which equals negative 4, negative 4 over 4, which equals negative 1. Okay, so I have my x already, but I need the rest of it. So to find the rest of the vertex, you plug it in. So 2, negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 6. Um, let's see, that's 2 times 1 minus 4 minus 6, so that's 2 minus 10, so negative 8. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry, guys. Okay, so negative 8. So my actual vertex is going to be negative 1, negative 8. And lastly, you just plug it into the formula. Okay, guys, this is about to cut off, so I'm going to make another video for you. Hold tight.